You guys, so much has been going on in the past week. If you did not catch our live video, you can go get it filled in. We had kind of a tough week, um, a death in my family. It was rough. So we had vlogged last week, but we didn't edit and upload. So we are playing catch up this week. We're gonna go through and catch you guys up on all that's happened in our last vlog. You'll see we were talking with our midwife and we had my iron levels tested. We get the results in uh, a phone call. How's it going guys? We uh, just dropped the kids off at school and decided that we needed to go grocery shopping. And but before we do that... To show you this baby before anything. We need to show you this baby. Is <laughs> you funny? You got crusties on your face. All right, that's all. That was all. But seriously, before we do that, we uh, made a pit stop. Okay, it wasn't a pit stop. It was a planned stop. It's a planned stop because this was not even on our way. But ah, we are at Old Navy um, getting some. Ah, we need some sneakers for Elena and Tyler. They both don't have tennis shoes. I feel like they need some like warm tops. That's what we have. Oh, but we really like Old Navy because it's super cheap compared to like everywhere else. So. Here we go. This is really why we're here. Okay, just I stopped because they look really soft and they are. Feel them. The store is so large. There's so many clothes in here. I feel like you could be in here all day. Oh, look at that, 40% off these jammies. Holla. When I start seeing like Christmassy clothes for kids, I'm like, I just wanna buy everything for them. What? Christmas cat jammies. Elena would love that. She really would, they do have them in her size. <gasps> you see the doggies? For the doggies. Oh my goodness, look at that. Judy would love those and Addie. They match your outfit perfectly. Like, are you going out in the woods? <laughs> she thinks she's about to go on a hiking trip. Hey, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. You guys, the call kind of blindsided me. Um, it had been five weeks in between having my iron tested the first time and then this time. Wasn't taking the liquid iron supplement, but I was, at least I started that I think towards the end, but just a little bit. Um, but I was upping like, just eating iron dense foods and taking a bunch of other supplements. So I expected to see some improvement. My numbers were literally the exact same. It was 8.4 and now it was 8.4. So when she called and told me that, there was a concern in her voice for sure because now I am 37 weeks. She was kind of talking me through some options. All a little overwhelming trying to process it while we were still at the store because basically if it doesn't come up to 10 when I go into labor, then I have to get transferred to the hospital. And because I am full term, labor can happen literally at any moment. So I knew I had just bought that iron, the liquid iron supplement, and I hadn't been taking it yet. So my thought was maybe I just need to like up my ante. I mean, is it possible to, if I hit the supplements hard <laughs> this, through this next week and even do a finger prick at my next appointment and just see? Well, thank you so much. We are counting on it. <laughs> we we're hopeful. Okay, bye. Okay. Dude, my iron hasn't budged at all. Like, not even a little bit. Oh, well. So what's the plan? I guess just um, do better and hope I'm gonna have them do a finger prick at the next appointment and just, it probably won't change, but just see if it does. Uh, that means this baby has got to stay put for a while. So, we had a week until my next appointment and I was determined to do everything that I could to get my levels to go up. I upped my 
my supplements I was taking four super B and six multigreens. I doubled that almost. I took six super B and 12 multigreens. Um, drinking my Ninja Red, which I am still drinking right here with orange juice because the vitamin C, hello. And the liquid iron, you can tell I'm about to take all my supplements now. <laughs> um, so drinking 20 milliliters of this stuff two times a day, which is four times like the normal dosage. So really, really hitting it hard. I've got my smoothies, trying to avoid things that inhibit iron absorption. So calcium, um, there's a few other things like coffee and tea, things like that will actually kind of block your body from absorbing the iron. Wasn't really avoiding those things before and this week I really was. So we're headed back to the midwife to have my blood drawn and just have the baby checked out again. Good morning everybody, how are you doing today? We are doing pretty well. Um, we're about to leave to take the kids to school and then um, we're heading to Danielle's midwife appointment. Fingers crossed that her blood iron levels um, are up. If not, I don't know what the next steps are. So we are heading out now, I'm waiting on Danielle. She's doing her makeup or something upstairs and we're just like, all right, it's clock ticking away. We gotta get the kids to school, so. Let's go. And here we are. We stopped for breakfast. We stopped to drop off kids. Hi. Okay, so we completed our trip to Whole Foods. Now we're headed into my appointment. John's getting the baby out of the car. I gotta ask him if I can put some stuff in the freezer. All right, ready? Yeah, what are you hoping to accomplish here? Well, I'm hoping they'll measure your tummy and see how big. I feel like <laughs> I'm in labor. John. It's active. John always has the sympathetic pregnancy symptoms. He's like, I mean, my back hurts. I'm like, shh. That's why I just peed on myself just to get the experience. Are you sleepy? Wow, wow, wow. Come on, let's go. Come on. Yeah, it slowed down a little bit. I've kind of taken like two days of rest. I had like some nesting, cleaned a whole lot. Okay. And then just like resting. Blood pressure looks good. Weight gain looks good. So I know that you spoke with Sarah last time about um, amping up the iron yeah. and all that. How's that going? I have been lots of iron, lots of heartburn. <laughs> lots oh, of iron. Sorry. That's okay. Well, because like the calcium, so you're trying to avoid mm -hmm. that, which right. helps with the heartburn. Right, right. Right. So what we'll do today, look at this one. You're so happy. You're so happy. Hi. So what we'll do today, we'll check in with baby, and then I want to do, um, I know Sarah spoke to you, we have a machine that does like a stat, a hemoglobin and hematocrit, yeah. it's a finger prick. It's not always super accurate, so we can do it just to sort of give us an idea. Yeah. But I also want to draw a lab and like actually get it sent out. So here is where the curveball kind of came in. What I originally thought was happening was that we were gonna just check in on the numbers. Um, I had asked, you guys saw that in another video, I asked to have my iron tested in a week because they said that it takes about four weeks for your body to make new red blood cells. So I figured there wouldn't really be, you know, much change, but let's just see. Because if they didn't change at all, even a little bit, then my thought was that my body might not be absorbing iron um, for some other reason, so like the placenta, or there can be just issues with my own blood and red and white blood cells. So, um, yeah, so I just wanted to like see if my body was even absorbing it, if I amped it up or whatever. So I was a little bit caught off guard um, during the appointment because I guess I just didn't realize like all the moving pieces to everything. Anyway, you're gonna find out. Um, basically the plan was a little bit up in the air. Yeah, and I know this has been about a week where you've been trying to amp it up and I feel like we could do it. The problem is that now your term Right. So if you go into labor, then you come here, right? So, and basically what happens is that we do another stat blood draw, and if your levels aren't quite there, then it's a transfer in labor, right. which is not ideal. So 
that's kind of worst case scenario, I feel like, is that you come here, I mean, it's not the worst worst, but you come here, you're in active labor, and then we're like, oh, we're getting back in the yeah. car. Um, so if we can get an idea of your labs today, then we can kind of play around with that. Depending on what they are, what we'll do is we'll meet as a team, I'll speak to our lead midwife, and we'll just sort of discuss the risks and benefits yeah. of another week of just sort of watchful oh. waiting, knowing that you could go into labor, yeah. or, um, or getting you established with somebody else who you don't have to play this game with that will just right. deliver you no matter what. And so yeah. it's a balancing act of what's best for you, what's safest, what's the most courteous to our partners out there. Um, and it's kind of, it's all of that together. Right. Yeah, so, that looks like, yeah especially because, you know, I wouldn't want to come here and have to transfer. It would be expensive. Like, <laughs> let's check in with baby. is kind of up in the air at this point um depending on what my numbers come back as they could decide to say hey it's gonna be better just for you to find another practice to get established that way you've had a few appointments and you can get to know somebody before you actually go into labor and then when you go to labor you're you're going to be delivering with a practice you're already established in versus having to transfer at the last minute and just getting a hospital doctor and um, whatever. So my head was kind of spinning because wow, we've been through this so like so many times this pregnancy in the very beginning trying to decide do we want a home birth, do we want a hospital birth, do we want a birth center birth, trying to find a practice that would take our insurance or one with a reasonable self-pay plan. And then when we finally decided we were asked to leave that practice because of our YouTube channel. So we had to start all over again and making that decision again, this time at like 28 weeks. So now here we are facing that possibility, except that I'm full term and the baby could be here between now, you know, and five weeks from now. And so it was like, definitely couldn't really process my thoughts at that moment. You know, we, there's nothing we can do except wait and see what the numbers said anyway, but it was a lot to, to kind of take in and consider Okay, all right, things got really real. It was 8.4. <laughs> so in, in a week. It's higher, exactly. But so you said it's not. Our cutoff is 10. Yeah. So let's see what these say, and then we'll meet together. Okay. okay. Honestly, we you are, you've had unmedicated births, like you've sort of, you've had a home birth, it's, we, we and we want you here. You know, we're not yeah. gonna, we're gonna try our best to keep you, um, but, I'll just see the again. Yeah. Yep. So we'll see what these next results are. We're kind of, we'll go from there. Okay. Mama, um, the chance that you do have to transfer, think of a practice that you would be comfortable with and that you would want yeah. to go to. Um, just to sort of and you know anticipate Mama. any mm -hmm. options. Right, right. Okay. All right guys, well it was good to meet you. you too. Nice meeting you. you. So yeah. Quick iron test results came back. She had said that they are not very accurate. That's why she wanted to do the blood draw and send it out to the lab. So it wasn't official, but they came back at 8.8. .8. It was 8.4. And remember it was 8.4, five weeks later, 8.4. One week, 8.8. .8. I was feeling really excited and hopeful um, because that to me says like, hey, your body actually can absorb the iron. You just weren't getting enough of it. Let's hit it harder, give it a little bit more time. But unfortunately, nobody was holding their breath because we still need to wait for the official lab results. I think her thought process was that those usually are more accurate and probably gonna be lower than what this quick test did come back as. So this is kind of where we were left. Hey, I'm good. How are you doing? That, that is very fast. You guys, I was not expecting to get that phone call until at least the next day, but their labs came back super quick. Literally that night they called me with the results. My iron levels from the actual lab results were 8.6. So we kind of met in the middle of my 8.4 and my optimistic 8.8. .8. Um, 
Obviously it stinks that it was lower than the finger prick, but to me it's still higher. I'm still holding out hope. So what they had decided, they kind of talked amongst themselves, is really up to me and what I'm comfortable with. And, you know, John and I kind of talked about it all afternoon. I've been thinking about it. I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to take my supplements faithfully. And we're going to play it week by week. We have an appointment next week. And hopefully those numbers will keep rising. If by next week the number's still the same or lower or anything like that, you know, we might have to consider a different plan of action. The goal is to get them up to 10 by the time I'm in labor. Hope that this baby will hold out. Some of my kids were this early, like Jude. Jude would have already been born by now. Um, <clears throat> and Elena was two weeks early and Tyler was like nine days early. We're banking on like Everly. <laughs> Everly was a lot late. If you guys didn't see my Moana parody, check that out because she was super overdue and it was hilarious and also not funny at the same time. <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna try to keep this baby in try to keep going with the iron, see what happens at the next appointment. But part of me just thinks, you know what? Let's just go for it. We'll wait. When I'm in labor, I'll go to baby and company. We'll test my iron. If it's not high enough, we'll go to the hospital. I'll tell the doctor, hey, what's up? Like, I got this on my own. Just like, I'll let you know when it's time to catch the baby because I know they're very particular about that part. Um, and then <laughs> hopefully just wing it, you guys. I hope you're not like cracking up at me, but you can be because part of me is joking, but also not. I've had five kids before. Um, oh, obstetricians don't really hang out with you during labor. They pretty much just wait until you're ready to push. And once the baby's crowning, then they come in. So, yeah, I don't know. We have a lot to still kind of weigh. Pray for me and John over the next week. Um, pray for my iron levels to come up because that is obviously the most ideal situation would be that my iron raises enough for me to deliver at Baby and Company. And yeah, other than that, I'm gonna stay hopeful. All right, well, we love you all. We will keep you filled in on the happenings here. Um, a lot is going on. We're getting ready for the holidays, getting ready for birthdays. Getting ready for my mom to come down. Getting ready for a baby. It's just crazy around here. Leave a comment if you're new here. Click subscribe. We will see you later.